today we are going to be having a close encounter with the world's largest seabirds and the world's smallest penguins. E We set off from the Hogwarts Backpackers in Dunedin city centre and make our way to the Otago Peninsula around mid-afternoon, giving us plenty of time to go check out the Royal Albatross and also do some penguin spotting tonight. And once we reach the Royal Albatross Centre, we are meeting our guide Suzanne, who is starting off telling us about the lifespan of the Albatross, which is actually super fascinating, but we'll give you more of those facts later on in the video. But for now, we're going to go to the first viewing section of the Royal Albatross Centre to get a close-up view of those Albatross. We are super lucky today weather-wise. It is not really beautiful weather, but it's the perfect weather to see the Albatross. The albatross birds have an amazingly huge wingspan which makes it quite hard for them to actually be able to take off and a very windy day makes them really playful in the air because it makes it a breeze for them to take off the land. From our super well hidden hide we get to see a lot of the albatross colony and they are behaving in the wild like if we weren't here because well they don't know we're here. It's really cool how close we are from the albatross. Our guide is giving us some binoculars, but to be quite honest, we don't even need to use them because we're that close. The group of albatross that we are seeing today is a bunch of teenagers. They haven't found a mate just yet and they are behaving very much like humans. They are making little groups and gangs and they are very, very social with each other. We see them chatting to each other or even trying to outdone one another when flying. However, when they are getting in the air and starting traveling around the world, they are a very solitary kind of animal. And albatross are great world travelers. It's actually really fascinating how far these guys travel around the world. Per year, they travel 192,000 kilometers and usually around 1,000 kilometers per day. And they rarely see land once they make their way out to sea. Most Southern Royal Albatross breed on the Subantarctic Islands, like the Auckland Islands or the Campbell Islands, but this is actually one of the very rare sites to see them on the mainland of New Zealand, so we feel super lucky to be here right now. And this tour is a great, non-intrusive way to get a glimpse into the life of this elusive bird. And the next section of our tour is going to take us to a colony of birds that, well, Laura and I have a bit of a beef with. If you remember when we were back in Fitienga, at the very early days of our trip, we have been basically robbed by red bill girl that stole our entire fish and chips. There should be a little bit of a note up on top where you can check out that episode. But in fact, the red bill girl's population is rapidly declining, making them kind of endangered now in New Zealand. Aside from seeing those birds yelling at us on New Zealand beaches, we usually never see how they actually live and how is a colony of those. So it was really cool to see them, even with the really lovely little cute babies. But our tour around the 45, the Tyra Head is already moving on. Tyra Head was a military battery that was built in the late 1800s to protect New Zealand from nobody because nobody ever attacked New Zealand. But because it has been built inside Tyra Head and not on top of it, it gives us perfect opportunities to check out all the surrounding bird colonies because it does not disturb them whatsoever. And this reminds me of the one last fact about the Southern Royal Albatross that I haven't mentioned is that it is the largest seabird in the world with a wingspan of over 3 meters. Leaving the Albatross colony behind, we go and grab a bite to eat in the Royal Albatross Cafe, waiting for our next activity. That's right, tonight we are heading to an elevated platform which has perfect views of a blue penguin colony. And while there are a few early stragglers that have already made their way to land, we are waiting for the main event tonight where we're going to see rafts and rafts of penguins coming into land to make their way to their hiding places for the evening. So right now we're looking for a raft of penguins, which is basically all of them swimming together, coming back to shore. So we are trying to spot in the dark a massive white patch in the water with a lot of weight because it's really windy. In short, I have no chance to spot them, so I'm leaving it to the professionals. 
so they just it's just here <laughs> okay, I can see. Okay, there's a really bright part, right? Is, are yeah. they on the bright part or are they before or after? It's closer this way. Okay. Well, the first few penguins are making it to shore, let me tell you a little bit about what events we are witnessing right now. The little blue penguins first are pretty rare and are almost only found in New Zealand. Those penguins are spending most of their life at sea. Every single day before the sun rises, they are heading to the water and are going to be fishing for the entire day. They usually fish alone, but when the fishing day is finished, they gather together in things that are called raft. That's a group of little blue penguins floating on the water. And as soon as their numbers is big enough, they are hitting the beach. They are waiting to be in big numbers so they can basically find safety in numbers and avoid predators. And as soon as they hit land, they are making their way toward their partners. To find their partners, every single little blue penguin has a different call. Um, that means they have a slightly different pitch to their scream, <laughs> because they're basically just screaming at each other. And this helps them find each other in the complete darkness. And the reason why we can see them right now is because the team at the Royal Alberto Center has installed some light which actually don't affect the penguins. So very highly sophisticated light and they're only on for about 30 minutes every evening for people to be able to witness that amazing event. It's so awesome to see such a huge colony of penguins coming in from the ocean. And for me and Robin, this is our first encounter this close to the little blue penguins. We have prime viewing position on these platforms where we can watch rafts and rafts of those penguins coming in. It's hard to contain our excitement as we see how many penguins are around us right now. There's so many little blue and white dots across the beach. Needless to say, everyone is buzzing at this awesome penguin viewing, but there are a few rules in order not to disturb their natural behavior. For instance, we aren't allowed to use any flash photography because this can damage the eyes of the little blue penguins. Also, it's pretty obvious, but we do need to stay as quiet as possible as well in order not to scare them. It's pretty obvious, but during the time of the penguin viewing, we are not getting any commentary because obviously they don't want to make any loud noises to disturb the penguins. So beforehand, we were given a few facts about these little blue penguins. And one of the main things about the penguins is that they're actually the smallest species of penguin in the world, only reaching to about 33 centimeters high. We also learned that the little blue penguins are monogamous, meaning that they only have one partner for their whole life. And it's up to the male to find the nesting site, which usually penguins prefer really dark, burrowed sites. Laura and I are super impressed to see how many penguins are actually coming out of the dark waters. We did not expect to see that many specimens. I really thought that there would be one or two wrapped and that'd be pretty much it. But within only minutes, the entire beach is filled with little white stuff running around and shaking all the salt water off their plumage. Usually, Laura and I prefer to join a wildlife tour rather than to try to spot wildlife by ourselves because usually, Wildlife tools have to have a Department of Conservation accreditation, which means that they are making sure that we do not disturb the wildlife while observing them, as well as usually having better access to specific locations, which gives us an amazing viewing opportunities. I am so amazed at how close we got to those blue penguins, and they really seem to not even know that we were here. And another thing that uh, usually accredited guides do is that they do some work for the Department of Conservation. For this instance right here on Pilot Beach, their duty is to count the number of blue penguins coming back from the darkness every single night. So they can keep a check on the size of the population and if it's increasing or decreasing. And tonight, as we are shutting off the light on those amazing blue penguins, the count is rather great. We have seen 187 blue penguins coming out of the waters. Laura and I loved our time at the Royal Albatro Centers and we can't recommend it enough when in Dunedin. Meow, meow.